So if you have any sense, you know you're not supposed to be drinking a lot of sugar. But hey, I like these. Because if every time you had the urge to drink some pop, you had to spend 20 minutes making it, you'd probably drink a lot less of it. And hey, hot summer day, some extra gin, or vodka that needs a drinking, or just a chill at home day off with the dogs while reading an ebook on your phone. It's nice. And in my theme of recipes that are simpler than cereal, we got it all here. A stalk of lemongrass, a jalapeno, a pound of ginger, a cup of sugar, and a liter of water. And then we'll get to the topic today, which is the three dysfunctional captains that usually lead a guy to the red pill. First, the drunk captain with the pissed first officer who's had to take command. The second, the captain and his constantly complaining passenger. And the third, the Titanic reboot with an all-female cast. So with the lemongrass, you want to give it a couple whacks with the back end of your knife. And then for everything here, don't worry about the rest. Just give it all a nice coarse chop. We're going to put it into the blender. So the first type is the drunk captain with the pissed first officer. The warmth is draining from your marriage, and you feel like you've tried your best to make her happy, but she finds fault in even your most minor mistakes. She treats you like a thug. <gasps> You're like that man who wrote that article for Huffington Post where his wife divorced him because he didn't get the extra lean ground beef. I mean, sure, you got the lean ground beef. But she specifically mumbled for you to get the extra lean. So you throw in a fight for good measure, and you both go to bed angry and resentful. You didn't get her beef, and she didn't get your sausage. In the morning, she hinted that you could have had sex that night, but you were looking forward to it, because it's been a whole month. But then you had to go and buy lean ground beef instead of the extra lean, didn't you? That extra lean fat might as well have been the fat chance you were having sex that night. Is forever enshrined in the manosphere as the chore play complaint. That if you did more dishes around here, she wouldn't be tired and you'd probably have sex more. This is usually the kind of guy who says, I used to be alpha but slowly became beta. And if that sounds like you, this is probably your situation. But your wife didn't turn you into this. You did it yourself. In other words, you're drunk. And it's not about the groceries, her berating, and her henpecking. It's because she's pissed off that you haven't stepped up as the leader. I'm not talking about the little stuff. Women can handle the drudgery in a relationship. I'm talking about the big choices that involve risk. The solution for this, though, it's pretty straightforward. She's given up completely on your ability to execute anything meaningful. So you need to consider it as if you're divorced and start acting like you're single. Get your shit together. Start working on your map. Make those structural improvements. Hit the gym. Handle all the big things. This includes... Bills, that kind of thing. Whatever. Now, it's going to definitely piss her off at first. She's been showing nothing but contempt. She thinks she's better than you, and she's not on your team. But eventually, if you just plow through it, these things tend to work out. The kind of woman who's desperate to see her man take charge, once she's sure it's a real thing, is more than happy to sit back and just enjoy. If you notice here, put the cold water in, add the ingredients, bring it up to a boil, about 20 minutes. The second type is the captain and the constantly complaining passenger. I'll bring a story of a, a friend of mine on this one. Every time he wanted to come out with us, because he hadn't seen us in forever, he had a fairly heavy sailing schedule, his wife would start giving him crap. You don't love me anymore, you just want to go out and get drunk with your friends, and he would immediately backpedal. He would justify it with deering. Oh, I just want to have a drink. I don't want to go out. And he would try and make her comfortable as hell and stop her from freaking out. And I remember this one time he made a giant thing of spaghetti for her. So she had something to eat when he went out. So she picked up the plate and she threw it against the wall. And the worst part is he called us saying that he couldn't go out. And then he ended up cleaning the spaghetti. So chances are, I mean, and pick your, and pick your analogy with this one. You could say walking on eggshells. You can say walking a tightrope. It doesn't matter. Now, this is the kind of guy you would never say, I used to be alpha anything. He's always been beta. He's always been codependent. And the thing is, the sex life isn't bad either. The problem is that sex usually comes at the end of a huge fight, which is not really nice. Now, I can get to the why this happens. There's some childhood stuff. Mom's treating kids like emotional tampons. The point is, how do you get out of it? And when I say no, I feel guilty is a wonderful book to explain 
the type of things you can do to get out of it. You essentially have to stop being afraid of her emotions. And sure, at first, it's like any type of enabler. It's She's going to double down on them. But eventually, if you starve these thought processes long enough, things eventually start to turn around. Of course, you're probably going to get like a DEFCON 1 level sh test, but there's nowhere to go from up from there. Just hold the course. Now the third type, I call this one the Titanic with an all-female cast reboot. So you probably met a really good woman. She's got her shit together. She's always this talk of town. She'll give you a call when you have a night out with some friends. She's planned everything. She calls you three times to make sure you're there on time. Maybe you get out there, and she finds ways to berate you in front of everybody. The problem with this one is that you were never the captain. She always wanted to be the captain. A lot of girls have daddy issues like this. They're very smart. They get their STEM degree and get a good job because they would never want to be in that position where mom had to rely on dad for everything. The problem for you comes, like I said earlier, women hate risk and they really hate rejection. And they screw up as much as the next person. Problem is then, they tend to take it out on you. Treat you like a piece of crap, berate you in front of people, essentially hide the badness in her behavior by showing how awful a person you are. Luckily for you, the solution is the same for all of them. Your stay plan is the same as the go plan. You probably won't even run into problems at first. She's going to be so busy in her little bubble that she won't even pay attention other than to throw a snide remark. I'm glad you're going to the gym. I was wondering when you were going to stop being a fat fuck. <laughs> Ah. 20 minutes later. So the way you win this one is essentially with dread. You start slow, you start building yourself a life outside of her, you start building up your value, and then she starts to realize that she has a prize on her hands and she's going to lose them if she doesn't step up. You're going to get huge fights from this, but you just got to stay the course. Same as right here. I'm going to pour this through the filter and try not to spill it. If you'll notice, we're going to get about a full liter pitcher. What we're going to do afterwards is take the liquid, put it back in the pan, and then we're going to reduce it further. So the sex life for this third type of captain is kind of weird. She has sex the way she wants to, when she wants to, and more often than not, it's when she wants a baby. And other than that, you guys are cut off. It's a really crappy place to be, and I hate when the guys have to put up with it. The thing about these, though, is it may not be fixable in the way that you want. These girls tend to be fairly large narcissists. A lot of the stories I remember hearing from them is they made sure to go to college, get a good job, so they never had to put themselves through what their mom had to be put through. In other words, relying on a man to provide while they take care of the family. Hate to say it, but in this case, it's most likely going to be the go plan, unless you like being second fiddle and treated like crap the entire way through. So to sum this up, there's three archetypes of men who end up in these desperate marriages and three different reasons they're there. So for each of them, you just have to keep in mind, get your shit together, make yourself your own mental point of origin, work on your dread and handle things that need to handle. Act as if you were single. At that point, it's up to the girl to decide whether she wants to come along for the ride or not. Either way, you're prepared. Just like we just finished preparing this ginger ale. Once we finish pouring it in here, you're going to notice it's a lot less after the reduction. Give it some time in the fridge, or you can pour it hot right over ice. Doesn't really matter. Add yourself some club soda, and you got yourself a nice little summer treat. So while we're making the drink here, I just want to take the time to thank all of my Patreon supporters. I genuinely appreciate this, you guys. And none of this would be possible without you. Feel free to keep watching. Like I said, on Saturdays, we still have the Red Man Group podcast. And then I'll be adding on words, uh, Red Man Group recap, where we usually try to get one or two guests the most and talk about the stuff in a little more detail and have it more like just a couple guys sitting around having a drink. <laughs>